Welcome back, everyone. It's the Beginner to Master's free run, episode number 27. I am back from my travels, uh, recovering from jet lag, but hopefully I can be energized today. Uh, coming into today, rated 1301 on an 88 game win streak. And I do have a fresh new profile picture from when I was around 1300 uh, US rating. So we'll try and keep it going. Uh, let's hop into the first game. Playing 23, horse 23. And I'll play uh, King's Pawn. We'll keep it uh, traditional. And what opening are we going to see? We see uh, the start of an Italian. And now, uh, two main moves here are knight of 6 and bishop to c5. Um, I'll stay with bishop c5. For the first maybe four years of my chess career, I uh, I played this move as black. And we see the Evans Gambit, which I don't think I've encountered yet in this speedrun. Uh, Evans Gambit is definitely a very aggressive opening. Uh, white is offering a pawn, which I will take. And generally, the point is to play a quick c3 and d4 and grab a lot of quick initiative and space in the center. So I'm going to have to remember my uh, my preparation because it's been a long time since I've studied the theory of this opening. Um, I know there's a lot of moves here. There's bishop a5, there's bishop e7, and bishop d6, I believe, are the, the three main moves. Um, let's start with bishop to a5. Pretty sure this is a main line. The idea that if white plays d4, there's still kind of this uh, pressure along the diagonal. But it's very important to like be constantly aware of white's threats from early on, um, especially when you're encountering a, a gambit like this. So white castles rather than playing d4 right away. Um, that gives me time to try and develop. Uh, I kind of like the idea of d6 and then maybe set up a quick bishop to g4. So let's start with this. I imagine white's going to expand with d4. A queen, yeah, queen b3 is also a aggressive move, hitting f7 immediately. And yeah, there's a few moves to address this. I mean, I could defend with the queen, like queen e7, queen f6, or queen d7. Uh, I don't think I want to play knight h6 because, yeah, the knight's not happy there. And then after d4, white's threatening. Bishop takes h6. So I think it's a question where to put the queen. And queen e7 is probably the most natural I have some vague memories of black playing queen d7, uh, which sometimes prevents the uh, eventual checks um, queen a4, but I think in this position it probably doesn't matter that much. I guess I should calculate that. Like queen e7, let's say white plays d4, and then I... I mean, if I play a move like knight to f6, then white can play d5, and then when I move my knight, let's say, to d8, there's queen a4 winning the bishop. So for that reason, I might be better off playing queen d7, and after d4, knight f6, d5, let's say the knight moves, there's no queen a4 check, and if bishop b5, there's c6. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm relying on some like experience here. Uh, having seen some of the, the opening prep for black against Evans Gambit, um, it's possible queen e7 was still fine, but I think this is just a safer move. It does look ugly blocking the bishop, but uh, I think it's better to be safe than sorry. Another idea I should note is um, if I have the chance, I would really like to play bishop b6 and then knight a5 to essentially fork the queen and bishop. White's being very aggressive, okay, attacking f7 yet again. And now there are a few ways to defend. There's knight h6, which is probably a bit more justified now that um, white's kind of not ready to threaten bishop takes h6. There's also knight to d8, which I think is 
also fine. I think I'll go ahead and play knight h6. This gets me closer to castling, a defends a pawn, and then if white like gets in this and then moves back to threaten bishop takes h6, I can move the knight to g4 and hopefully maneuver it back to the center. But definitely a very uh, tricky opening to start the speedrun. Not used to encountering this sort of aggression in this series. White's playing f4, so trying to get the rook involved, uh, opening the f-file. Um, I mean, the nice thing is that if white takes, I can take back defending and attacking. And I might as well throw in bishop b6 check. This comes with tempo. And assuming white plays king h1, I can decide what to do. I mean, knight a5 looks quite nice. There's also knight g4 to threaten knight f2, but then that would uh, kind of abandon f7. So yeah, let's go for knight a5. Really just trying to get rid of one of these things. White's probably going to move the queen. Bishop b5 maybe is playable, like takes, takes. I mean, I'm up a pawn here, so I'll be happy to simplify the position. Actually, I'm realizing that if queen b4, maybe I don't have to take right away. Like, I could play queen b4, c5. The queen would be tied down to the bishop. And there is queen b5 in that line. But I'm feeling comfortable. I mean, I've basically defended against white's main threats, and now I'm getting my own attack. I'm a bit behind on time, but that's okay for now. I imagine white's debating between queen b4 and bishop b5. I really don't see any other candidate moves. Although maybe white could be considering taking, takes. Like for example, takes, 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 takes. Wait a minute. Takes, takes, queen takes, queen takes, knight takes, king takes. I would win a piece, but then after takes, it would be check. But I think that's still good for me. Like I just side sidestep the king. I'll be up a piece. White can win the pawn on d6. But we don't go into that. Instead, bishop b5 is played. So now I can play pawn c6. Saving my queen, attacking the bishop, and white's queen is still attacked. So it looks like I'm winning material here. Yeah, what did I say earlier? I, I was calculating knight takes b3, but yeah, c6 was just far a far more simpler option. And now I could take with knight or pawn. I mean, taking with knight will centralize a knight, but I like taking with pawn. Because I get the pawn closer to the center, and I also open up the idea of bishop a6 to hit the rook and develop the bishop. And now things are going very well. Because I still have the initiative in the position, and this and this will come with even more threats. So yeah, let's play bishop a6 quickly. Now white's going to have to move the rook. Moves to f2, so I mean, if I take it, I do lose the knight. I'm a bit more tempted to play knight g4. Because then the rook, I mean, then there's rook f3. So it's, the rook's not actually trapped there. Yeah, probably just taking the rook and winning more material is the way to go. Now the bishop's attacked. There's a few interesting squares. I mean, bishop f1 is a move. Like, completely invading white's position. And that might be the best approach, because then I'm setting up queen g4. Like, most of white's pieces are doing nothing on the queen side. 
And then most of my pieces will be attempting to checkmate the, the white king. So life is pretty good here. So if I play queen g4, um, white doesn't have any counterattacks. g3, I think, would be the only move to try and survive. And then I can take the knight or play queen d1. After g3, maybe queen d1 is better. Like going straight for the kill. So the Evans Gambit for white turned into more than just gambiting a pawn, basically gambiting a lot of the material and the king, but sometimes this is the nature of playing gambits, like they can backfire. Uh, after the game, I can show what I think is the main line. Might have to check with the opening book or the engine. Okay, so g3 is played. And now... Yeah, queen d1, friends checkmate in one. And it's not easy for white to defend. Like, there's so few defensive resources here. And there's no way to effectively check the king. Uh, the main one threat is bishop to h3. And the only move I see really to prolong the mate is moving the h pawn. But then. I can still play bishop h3, king h2, queen g1, and it's going to be mate. Bishop h3. Okay, nice way to finish the game. Um, not every day you can do this to the Evans Gambit. Uh, very often it takes a lot more defensive uh, play from black, but I got the initiative pretty quickly in this game. And yeah, it seemed like white was maybe a bit hesitant to play d4. Um, but d4 should be the main move here. And after pawn takes d4, then, then white can play queen b3 or castling. Uh, there's a lot of theory around this. I'm sure there's a lot of uh, YouTube videos covering these lines. Um, but I'll admit that I, I haven't really studied the Evans Gambit in depth uh, from the white side. And um, it's been a while since I've looked at like lines from the black side. So if we just go forward in the game, uh, I think I was able to deal with uh, the early initiative. And yeah, I do want to note here, like if I played queen e7, then I think it would have been a bit more difficult because uh, white's already threatening d5 and then queen a4 check to win material. So I mean, black is still okay here after bishop to b6, but... I was happy with queen d7, and yeah, white's attack didn't really pan out. And after knight a5, yeah, life was very good. White should have played queen b4 to hold on to material. Um, but then, yeah, I was saying c5 is maybe an option, but also just taking the bishop. And uh, yeah, maybe just castling is a fine approach for black. So, uh, nice game to start the episode. Let's keep it going. New opponent playing 50 i5 from Poland. And uh, I'm black again. It's funny, the previous episode I was white three games in a row, and every single game was a Ponziani. Uh, speaking of Ponziani, I'm facing, facing it from the black side. So uh, this is not a situation I'm used to. Um, but I guess I'll have to reveal what to do against this opening. Uh, there are a lot of like acceptable moves, like knight f6 and d5 are probably the two most common. We saw the, the previous episode, f5, also very playable. Um, I'm going to play the most principled move, pawn d5. This exploits the fact that if white takes and then I take, there's no knight c3. Um, but white's prepared. White plays queen a4. Uh, I'm wondering if my opponent has watched some of my... YouTube videos on the Ponziani, because um, this is a very tricky move. If I take on e4, white can take on e5. That's already good for white. And meanwhile, if I play bishop d7, I would lose a pawn. So I'm going to play the main line, 
And the main line is kind of hard to figure out if you haven't seen this position before. But it's really just a matter of defending against white's threat. White does want to take on e5. So I'm going to play f6. And f6 is not a move you should normally look to play, especially early in the game. Generally, it's weakening to the king. But uh, in this case, it's simply reinforcing the center. And white is building up pressure. This is still the main line. Now I'll play knight to e7, again reinforcing the center. And like even though f6 and knight e7, they're kind of ugly looking moves because okay, knight e7 blocks the bishop. Uh, the center is really well defended now. Uh, but white's going for some early complications. Uh, d4, I don't think I've seen this move before. Uh, usually when I play the Ponziani, I like to take and then castle quickly and then later go for d4. So d4 right away, I mean, white's really trying to pressure the e5 pawn. The knight is still pinned. The drawback of d4, it obstructs the queen from defending e4. And I think I'll be happy to take... I'm attacking the knight, so white doesn't really have time to take on e5. So knight retreats. That's a good sign. But the pawn, the pawn is undefended on e4. I might end up losing it back. But there's a few moves to consider here. Of course, I could take on d4 which then white could either take back or take on e4. I can also defend with bishop f5, maybe even pawn f5. I do want to note that a move like a6, it looks like it attacks the bishop, but I don't think it's actually threatening to win the bishop. But maybe it's something to consider. Like, I'm actually wondering, a6, knight takes e4, I give away the rook, takes, takes, and then there's this move knight d5, threatening to trap the queen with knight to b6. There's a few episodes ago I showed a trap in the Scandinavian, which featured the same idea where you allow the queen to take the rook in the corner, and then the knights end up trapping the queen. I guess if I want to play a6, there's also takes, takes. But then if white takes, I can take, take, and then take. Because after queen takes, the knight's no longer pinned, and I take. And I'll still be up a pawn there. Yeah, honestly, I, I think I like a6 the best. Uh, it's based on the calculation. I give away the rook. I'm, I'm just trying to make sure that after I sacrifice a rook, Knight d5. Yeah, the queen has no escape because the bishop will control a3. My pawn will control a4. And all the squares along the a-file are controlled, along with b8, controlled by the knight. So, yeah, I'm going to go for a6. I mean, this is an opening that I've studied a lot, uh, mainly from the white side. But we're already... Uh, in some territory that is a bit unfamiliar. I'm trying to rely on some uh, some nice calculations. I'm very curious what white's going to do here. And white does take on e4, so let's take the bishop. Oh no, my rook. And now knight d5. That's a really nice concept, just getting the knight to uh, attack the, the queen in the corner. It's not every day that you want your knight specifically accessing the corner. Um, knight c5, though, I'll admit I did not see coming. And this does attempt to muddy the waters. If I play knight b6... White's going to try and counterattack with like this or takes on b7. If I take the knight, then... Oh, white's also obstructing the bishop from controlling a3. Oh, it's not simple. 
Yeah, I might not actually be trapping the queen. Because knight b6, the queen just moves back. And it seems like there should be compensation there. So I have to be careful not to get too low on time. I, mean, I could start by taking and then win the pawn. Yeah, knight b6, queen a3. Completely miss that. Knight b6, queen a3. Then I take on d4. I'm debating on the move order here. I'm going to start with knight b6. This does allow the queen to escape. I mean, I've only sacrificed uh, a rook for bishop. And hopefully I'll get some pawns for it too. Yeah, let's take on d4. Trying to up the pace here. Kudos to my opponent for finding this move. This has completely escaped me. Like castles. Why well, wants to play rookie one? Wow. That's super tricky. If I play queen d5. I have this move though. This looks pretty good because after rookie one, I have king f7. The queen's attacked and it's going to have to abandon the knight. Yeah, rookie one looks like a really annoying check because yeah, I definitely don't want to play bishop e7. So I play bishop e7, queen here, and I can't legally take the knight because the bishop would be pinned. But after king f7, the king is actually like decently safe on the square. And yeah, I'm keeping the attack now against the queen and the knight. Now I can take. So now I'm no longer down material. Oh, white has this move though, attacking these things. But I have this move defending everything. That's a funny position, queen d5. But queen d5, there's, there's b4. Am I losing back material? Getting a very long time too. I have to try this. And b4 might be coming. Maybe I'll go for d3 and try and fork. Yeah, it's still a super tricky position. Okay, white didn't find b4, so now I can take. Now I have a clump of pieces nicely controlling the center. I am attacking the queen. I'm not quite trapping the queen. The queen does have this square. But it's looking good now. Uh, I think very soon I'm going to have some pretty brutal attack against white's king. I mean, maybe bishop h3 is a threat. Yeah, this is a really cool game. So white counterattacks my queen. So, I mean, taking on b5 is probably the simplest of... I'm looking for better alternatives like queen, queen f5. Oh no, queen f5, hangs a knight. Okay. Chat lag is uh <laughs> is preventing me from seeing things clearly, maybe. Okay, let's just take the queen. Uh so I have two minor pieces for uh the rook. Pawns are equal. C7 is defended by this knight. At this point, I, I really just want to try and move quickly and simplify as much as possible. And maybe try and win some material. Um, 
Yeah, this move would have simplified, but with knight d4, I'm trying to get the fork. Just centralize the knight. Yeah, my opponent has been really uh, resilient this game. But okay, now it looks like I'm guaranteed to fork. Like Whatever white takes back with, the knight will also hit e3. And if rook c1, I'm going to have bishop takes e3. So I counterattacks the bishop. I'll take on e3. Oh, it's very close to mating now. I mean, bishop c4, the only legal move is rook e2. And then I can take the rook. And there's no reason to even take the rook here. I'll just keep the pin. I want to bring my rook in to deliver mate. If white plays king e1, then I can take the rook. And I've I've left myself with enough time to convert this position. Up a rook and a bishop and a pawn. Yeah, just getting the rook into play, optimizing the bishop. And there's a few strategies to try and win this. Um, one is to just win some pawns and then queen, but another strategy is to try and orchestrate a mating net, which I think I'll I'll go for. I'll try and win efficiently. Um, the king's a little bit slippery though. Hitting the knight. Okay, let's win some pawns. Yeah, I'm not seeing not seeing a mating construction with what I had there. Although maybe maybe I'm closer than than I thought. If I put the rook back, play c5, and then take here. That would be checkmate. But then I would lose b6, so I think I just want to clean up the king side. Keep cleaning up. Yeah, very important not to stalemate. Like, knight here would be stalemate, so let's avoid that. I'll put the rook back, and then I'll start uh, pushing the pawn. Okay. I don't usually do these multi-free moves, but uh, a nice way to finish the game. 30 seconds to spare, so... Uh, yeah, very hard-fought game. There are definitely some things to unpack there. My opponent like definitely knew some of the early theory with queen a4 and bishop b5. And then, yeah, d4 is not a main move, and this is, I guess, considered a mistake. You can put on the eval bar just to show. Black is already substantially better here. So after I took, white well, moved. I play a6, takes, and taking taking is still better for black, but it was based on an oversight that I'm not actually winning the queen. Uh, white could have also played b4 here to make the a3 square available. Um, but the thing about this position is black has a lot of compensation for having sacrificed a rook. It's still much preferable for black. Engine is saying f5 with a big plus. So after knight c5, played knight b6, and took knight c4. 
Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe there were some better options. Engine says B4 was better. But then around here, yeah, it got a little bit murky. Let's check here. Queen B3, take. And I played Queen D5, and yeah, White should have gone for B4 here to try and win back material. And I wasn't sure what I was going to do against this move. I was looking at either d3 or pawn takes c3. Uh, the engine says pawn takes c3 is best. And after queen takes, 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 then the only move to keep the advantage is pawn c2. With the idea that when the knight moves, the pawn's going to be really well defended. And yeah, black is, is in good shape here with just... Uh, a giga pawn on c2. So that didn't happen. b4 wasn't played after taking, I think. Uh, I think it was pretty smooth sailing from here. Yeah, I managed my time decently enough not to flag. So really interesting game. Um, let's do one more. I think the theme of today has been uh, encountering tricky openings. So we'll see if we have another one. I'll play pawn e4. Okay, another uh, kind of offbeat tricky opening. This is called the Nimzovich. Against this, the main move is pawn d4, but I can also play knight f3 if I want to try and transpose into some normalcy. Um, but let's go for pawn d4. This is generally the most principled move. If you can control the center with pawns early on, then you just should. Black is playing a6, so what is this? Let's just play d5, attacking the knight. This resembles an Alakine's defense, but usually the Alakine is when the kingside knight gets kicked around. This time it's a queenside knight. Um, f4 definitely comes to mind, or bishop f4. I think f4 is justified, just gaining more space. And then I'll, I'll look to play knight f3 next. Like again, usually you should not move your f-pawn early in the opening, but there's always exceptions. And this is a case where Black's spending a lot of time moving the same piece, and I might as well take advantage by controlling as much space as possible. And these pawns aren't really like overextended because they're so easy to reinforce with my pieces. I should note with this move, I was threatening to play this to trap the knight. But now f5 can be met with knight e5. So not quite winning material. But let's uh let's just keep developing. Knight c3. I'm developing knights before bishops. It's still kind of a question where to put my bishops. It's actually a little bit annoying that black played a6, because I would have liked to have the resource bishop b5 check. But here, okay, let's just play bishop to e2, breaking the pin. Black plays e5, okay. So Black is coping. If I take on Passant, the bishop can't take because then I have f5 with a fork. So the pawn would probably take. It's a question if I want to like trade off my extended pawn on d5 because in some sense like take take kind of weakens box position a little bit and then there's potential later for f5 so i think i will go for this opens the center a bit too i'm having the early lead in development okay so with bishop e6 looks like black missed a fork in the position and uh, yeah, winning material now. I was going to say that if black takes back with the pawn, then I would castle and then probably look to open the center as quickly as possible. With knight of four, I can take the bishop or the knight. I think I'd rather take the knight. I mean, there is a line takes, and then if knight takes g2, I play king f2 effectively trapping the knight. I mean, both moves are good. 
Let's go for this. This might be... Actually, with this move, Black could take back. Yeah, and then I, I would give a pawn for the piece. So let's go for this. A little bit indecisive there. But with this move, I'm not giving a pawn for the piece. And uh, yeah, the bishop is still attacked. So trying to show no mercy. That's sad for Black, because the bishop had to retreat there. And now I can do the opposite of retreating. Having ideas of knight g5, maybe even queen d5 to hit both pawns. And queen f6, it's an active looking move, but after bishop g5, the queen is now trapped. Just so nice having so much control over like most squares in the position. So I wouldn't be surprised if black resigns here. But I will say at this level, like usually you shouldn't resign. You should fight on like every game, even after an opening disaster like this. Okay, so black gets the bishop for the queen. But now the knight comes in. And the only move to defend f7 was to play knight h6. Black abandons f7, and now yeah, things are crumbling very quickly. Okay, this position feels like an all-you-can-eat buffet. Let's, I mean, let's take a rook, keeping the bishop attacked. If the bishop saves itself, Oh, now I don't have knight f7, so that was probably the best move. So I can play knight f7 still if I want. But let's go for knight 2, e6, hitting this. And I'm going to try and put black out of their misery as soon as possible. And queen d4 looks nice. Hitting g7, but also looking to invade via a7. Yeah, let's invade. Um, we can take the pawn on b7. I was briefly looking at sacking the knight and queenside castling with check, but uh, no need. Now attacking c7. In black should probably try rook c8 here. I have a lot of attackers ready to pounce. I mean, e5 might be one idea to open the d-file and then castle with check. But if we see rook c8, maybe I just take on g7. And that would threaten bishop e6. Okay, black takes on e4. If I want to, I could take and then take, but let's go for the kill. Queen takes e7. Only one legal move here. Again, only one legal move. Now with king f8, I could castle with check after takes, takes. But I could also save the knight. Let's save the knight. And now there's a few legal moves. Okay, I'm going to force the king back to the f-file. Now I'll castle. A very ironic move, getting my king safe. Attacking black's king. Oh, where is the mate? Queen d7. Yeah, it looks like... I see mate in three. Maybe there's something more efficient, but let's do this. Oh, wait, that's okay. <laughs> it's taking a little bit too much time there. Uh, it was actually made in four, so it's not made in three. I forgot there's king f8. Yeah, the engine says nine f4 is made in four. Here, and then take, and then here, and then here, and then here, and then here would have been the most efficient way to finish the game. 
But uh, yeah, it seems like Black just got in trouble early on there. Played a questionable opening. Um, does this have a name? Like, what, what is what is knight c6 and a6? When I played d5, I was half expecting knight a7, which I thought maybe is the only point of pawn a6 early on. Uh, yeah, chess.com is calling this a St. George, which I think St. George is a6 on move 1. But knight c6 on move 1 is a Nimzovich, so... Maybe it was a St. Nimzovich George or something, but not a recommended opening. Um, generally, if you play the Nimzovich, uh, you should follow up with either d5 or e5. Or if you're Carlson, I think Carlson's played d6 in this position, which is also acceptable. But um, yeah, anyway, I think I'll end it there. Uh, some fun games this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed them. If you have questions, leave them below. Uh, if you like the content, do subscribe. It does help the channel, and I'll see you guys soon.